Aloha guys, this is Dr. Tom Walker coming back at you. All right, we're going to talk about cranial nerves today, among other things. We talked about the CNS, the PNS. The CNS is what? The brain and spinal cord. So what's the PNS, the peripheral nervous system? It's everything else. It consists of uh, 12 pairs of cranial nerves, among other things. But guys, what the, what the cranial nerves are, they're highly specialized nerves that all originate in the brain or the brain stem. And they control all the super-powered stuff we can do, like vision, hearing, and taste, and things like that. Movement of our eyes, as well as vision. Okay, so here's, here's a quick rundown of the, uh, of the 12 pairs of cranial nerves. They're all, uh, and their numbers are all listed as Roman numerals. But number one is olfactory, it's smell. Number two is optics, what processes vision. Number three is oculomotor, moves the eyeballs around. Number four is trochlear, which also controls eye movement. Eye movement, guys, is so complicated or delicate that it has three separate uh, cranial nerves that deals with it. Five is the trigeminal, the facial nerve. It has three branches. Six uh, is the abducens. It also is another one that controls eye movement. Seven is the facial nerve. Eight is the vestibular cochlear. Years ago, it was called auditory. It's the nerve that controls hearing or, or, or conducts hearing. Uh, nine is glossopharyngeal, pharyngeal, the throat, the tongue, that sort of thing. Uh, that's eight. Where's nine? Is um, that's that's twelve. That's eleven. A glossopharyngeal is, is nine. Vagus is 10. It runs down, guys, uh, the front of the spine and goes to all the major organs. It's the only cranial nerve that does that. 11 is the uh, spinal accessory. They used to call it spinal accessory. Here they're just calling it access uh, accessory. It, it provides innervation to the SCM muscles and the trapezius muscles. And 12 is the hypoglossal, controls tongue movements and that sort of thing. These are all highly specialized. Each one is known by its name, by its number, but it also they all have a name as well. All right, so here they are. Cranial nerve of one, olfactory, uh, olfactory is smell. Cranial nerve of two is optic. Cranial nerve of three, oculomotor. Just like the name says, eye movement, oculomotor, moving it around. Cranial nerve of five, trigeminal, has three branches. Cranial nerve of six, abducens, another one that moves the eye. Seven, vestibular cochlear, or this is eight, I'm sorry. Well, the facial was seven. <clears throat> Vestibular cochle cochlear. The ears do two things, guys. They hear, but they also control balance. The vestibular branch takes care of balance. The cochlear branch is the part that takes care of hearing. Nine, glossopharyngeal, goes to the tongue, pharynx, and the throat. Innervates it. And 12, hypoglossal, also is the tongue. Okay, and that's it. Now, there's a lot. This, these things are much more complicated than what we've indicated so far. And we've only touched the slightest little bit. But this is med terms, so we're just wanting to learn the terms, guys. You'll go into more detail about them in anatomy. Okay? Now, in addition to the 12 pair of cranial nerves, there are the other portion of the peripheral nervous system. Is there are 31 pairs of spinal nerves. These are the nerves that come out off the spinal cord and exit out bilaterally between the vertebra. There are eight thoracic, uh, I'm sorry, eight cervical nerves, 12 thoracic, five lumbar, five sacral, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, and one coccygeal coming off the tailbone. They don't have names. Now, all the uh, cranial nerves do, but the spinal nerves are just numbered. Okay, now these nerves, guys, these spinal nerves, once they come out and exit out of the spinal cord, and come out between the vertebra, they form groups or plexuses. So there's a cervical plexus, there's a brachial plexus that makes a brachial means arm. Be sure to learn that. Uh, the brachial plexus gives rise to the nerves that go in the arms, and then there's a lumbosacral plexus that gives rise to the nerves that make up the uh, nerves that go into the legs. Okay. All right, now a dermatome. Surprisingly, these strips of skin are innervated by that particular nerve. So let's say T1. T1 is the first thoracic right here. 
this portion of the skin receives its innervation or its sensory input from that nerve. So if you uh, stuck a pin right here, it would be T1 that would be sending that information up to the brain. So for example, uh, if, if you tested right here and this person had numbness for some reason, L4, then the lower lumbar area for some, it's got something going on. And they're called derma, derma means skin, dermatomes. So they're used for diagnostic purposes. Functional classification of peripheral nervous system. Let's see, functional nerves going, what do they do? Anything somatic means body, guys. Afferent means going towards the spi uh, spinal cord or up to the brain. So that means they're sensory. Motor signals don't go to the brain. They come from the brain, guys. So anything going to the brain is a sensory information or afferent with an A. And that's what it says here. Somatic efferent. Somatic means body. Efferent are the ones moving away from the spinal cord. Those are the motor nerves that make muscles contract. Okay? So efferent is going away. Afferent is going up. Anything going up is sensory. Anything coming out is generally is motor. Now, in addition to the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system, we also have the autonomic nervous system. Controls things that happen automatically. What I always say is I say... Autonomic means automatic. Autonomic means automatic until people memorize that. <laughs> autonomic means automatic. What does that mean? Well, like breathing or digesting your food. You don't have to will your digestive system. Do it. It's controlled by stuff that we don't have to think about. That sort of thing. Autonomic nervous system carries out automatic and unconscious visceral or internal organ. Visceral always means organs or guts, guys responses and regulates organ function. Now, the autonomic nervous system has two divisions. The sympathetic, which wires you up, fight or flight syndrome, and the parasympathetic, which brings you back down or mellows you out. Okay, now here's the central, here's the brain and the spinal cord. If you notice, the parasympathetic fibers come out of the brain stem and down near the sacrum. And the, the sympathetic fibers, the ones that wire you up, like this bear is after you, come out of the thoracic and lumbar area. So fight or flight and this feed or breed. And in fact, they're balanced. And many nerves have both sympathetic and parasympathetic um, effects in them, or, or they regulate both. Many of them do. Okay, now. So make sure you know that, you know, you know what the central nervous system is, the peripheral nervous system, easy enough. You're going to have to know your cranial nerves eventually and your spinal nerves. But the spinal nerves are just numbered. And then the third part of the nervous system is the autonomic. It's comprised of the sympathetic and the parasympathetic branches. Sympathetic wires you up. Parasympathetic calms you back down. And in fact, they're in a balance Okay, now there are medic, uh, different kinds of prescription meds that people take that mimic this stuff. So symp sympatho symp sympathomimetic is a drug. See, it says pharmacology. That means drugs, chemicals, meds that mimics the sympathetic nervous system. So what does it do? It makes your heart rate stronger and your pulse go and you're breathing faster and deeper. Let's say somebody that has a sluggish heart rate for some reason. They may have to take drugs like this to boost it up, see. Parasympathetical mimetic. Just think of a mime. You know these mimes, how they're up there. You're mimicking. Mimic. And then vagolytic has to do with the vagus nerve, the cranial nerve 10. Lytic breaks stop. Okay. For right now, guys, just just have a feeling. Just know that sympathomimetic mimics the sympathetic nervous system and parasympathetic mimetic is is a drug that simp that uh, that uh mimics the parasympathetic okay how's that uh, okay all right Affer afferent carries messages towards the brain and spinal cord from the foot say cranial nerves there's 12 pairs they carry messages to and from the brain now the cranial nerves guys some are motor and some are sensory but many are both so it may uh, it doesn't necessarily have all. It's one, and they're already in the brain, see. 
Efferent nerve carries messages away from the brain and spinal cord. They're almost always a motor nerve. E goes away, A goes towards. In addition to motor nerves, which makes muscles contract, they also uh, make hormones or make uh, glands secrete their hormones. Okay, let's see what else we've got. Ganglion or ganglia. This is singular, this is plural. A group of nerve cell bodies in the peripheral nervous system. Uh, yeah, but it's, they're outside of the brain and spinal cord. That's the thing. They're, they're actually little bumps in chains that run along the spine. Motor nerve carries messages away from the brain and spinal cord to muscles and organs. And it's an it's efferent. It means it moves away from the brain. Now, we keep going over this, guys, but that's what you have to do with this stuff. Especially if it's something you, you don't know. I mean, I venture to say that none of you knew what a, have heard the term ganglion or afferent nerves before this class, right? So be cool. Be cool. Yeah, you'll be all right. Parasympathetic nerves, autonomic nerves at slow heart rate and breathing and speed up the gastrointestinal tract. Also the uh, a reproductive system. It stimulates it because uh, when you're under sympathetic uh, stimulation where your life is at stake, for example, and, and it pumps out that adrenaline and your heart rate and all that gets racing so you can run or fight. Reproductive and immune system and gastrointestinal functions are at a low priority then, so they're, they're suppressed. Peripheral nervous system, the nerves outside the brain and the spinal cord, which in fact are the 12 pairs of cranial nerves, the 31 pairs of spinal nerves and the autonomic nerves in the autonomic nervous system. That's our last one. Plexus. Plexus is a large interlacing network of nerves. There's a cervical plexus, a brachial plexus for the arms, and a lumbosacral plexus for the legs. Sensory nerve. Uh, carries messages toward the brain and spinal cord from a receptor. Of course, since it's going to the brain, it's an afferent nerve. Why do they have all these different terms and stuff? I, I don't know, guys. I had to learn the same thing 30-something years ago. Spinal nerve has, there are 31 pair of them. They rise from the spinal cord. <clears throat> they come out between an openings where two vertebrae come together, guys. It forms a hole called the intervertebral foramina. And the, on either side, the nerves exit and come out that. Okay, that finishes this, so we're going to move on to the next one. I'm going to see if I can get this thing to stop. So I'm assuming I can get it to stop because usually I run the whole time. This one was a briefer one. We will see you next time. Be there, be square. Dr. Thomas signing off.